This is the world's longest bridge, and it's named as Hong Kong Zhuhai and Macau Bridge. It's a miracle in the world's engineering history and is regarded as a man-made marvel and one of the seven wonders in the modern world. This 55-kilometer-long mega project is the world's longest sea crossing bridge and a tunnel system, and it links Hong Kong, Macau, and Zhuhai cities together. From the beginning, the construction of this bridge was a big deal. Many people were skeptical since it was going to be built in an area with strong typhoons and sometimes earthquakes, but it is designed to withstand 8 magnitude earthquakes and category 5 typhoons. For the construction, it took about 420,000 tons of steel plate, 330,000 tons of steel bars, and 1 million tons of concrete, not to mention 2 artificial islands and 1 undersea tunnel. For the perspective, it can be used to build 60 Eiffel Towers and 8 Burj Khalifas, and in terms of its length, this bridge is 20 times the length of the Golden Gate Bridge in San Francisco. It is indeed a marvel of engineering and it's insane even to think that we humans have the capability to build such colossal and incredible structures. But in terms of its use, it has become the biggest construction waste in the history of the world. Four years after the bridge was completed, there is hardly any traffic on this bridge. So why then it was even built in the first place? When the Hong Kong Zhuhai Macau Bridge was about to be opened to public, the decision makers suddenly realized a big problem. Who will use this bridge? Vehicles from mainland China cannot use it because mainland license plates cannot enter or leave Hong Kong and Macau. Similarly, Hong Kong vehicles can't use it because Hong Kong license plates can't go to mainland China and Macau. And Macau vehicles can't use it because Macau license plates can't go to mainland China and Hong Kong. Only vehicles that has three license plates, mainland China, Hong Kong and Macau can use it. And such vehicles are very few in numbers and those who need to go on the bridge are even more rare. Part of it is, is one country, two systems. Mainland China, Hong Kong and Macau have separate everything, including license registration, insurance and different bureaucracies. In principle, Guangdong province and Hong Kong could negotiate an agreement allowing for one registration as they share a huge border. However, this hasn't happened and the side that is less willing is Hong Kong. For both economic and environmental reasons, Hong Kong has very restrictive rules on owning an automobile and has very high import taxes on cars. Hong Kong also has restrictive auto standards, like for example cars in Guangdong could be both left and right hand drive, but cars in Hong Kong must be only right hand drive. Not to mention, you have to acquire a permit to cross the bridge. And to get this permit, there is a long paper process, and to get all those documents takes at least 12 business days. Even if you have the permit, it doesn't automatically guarantee an entry on the bridge, because that permit will only be granted to 150 cars a day and the applicants must be Hong Kong permanent residents have to prove they are employed or have a firm in Macau and vice versa. If there are more than 150 applicants on any day, licenses will be distributed via a lottery. Even if you win the lottery, you can't make it all the way to Macau. You must leave your car before the entrance to the city and take a public taxi or a bus. So these restrictions render Hong Kong Zhuhai and Macau Bridge even more useless. Is this bridge one of the biggest money waste in history or the greatest chess move by the Chinese government? Hong Kong Zhuhai Macau Bridge is not completely useless because it will be the main catalyst for integrating Hong Kong into China. Indeed, from an economic perspective, it's a loss and it will never recover its expenses because it serves more symbolism than its use and it's entirely possible that those restrictions will be completely abolished. Since the handover of Hong Kong from the UK to China in 1997, currently Hong Kong is officially in transition period, and this transition period ends in 2047. But China is trying to speed up this process. If we investigate this map, there are few convenient coincidences. Firstly, let's look at the S3 expressway completed in 2007. 
This expressway can be seen as a bloodline between Guangzhou and Shenzhen, China's one of the biggest and richest cities. You might be wondering why the S3 expressway chose to terminate in a place that is so close to the Shenzhen Bay Bridge. That leads to Expressway 10 in Hong Kong. And now let's look at the latest expressway built in Hong Kong. It seems they are trying to construct an undersea tunnel and connect to its international airport. Obviously, this road is mainly for mainland people who land in Hong Kong International Airport but want to go to Shenzhen directly. The distance between Hong Kong Airport and Shenzhen Downtown is just 20 kilometers. How about other similar constructions happening in this area? In the north, there is the world's longest suspension bridge called Nansha. It has been completed and it was opened to the public in 2019. The Nansha government has promised a 75% personal income tax reduction if you settle there. As a result, the Nansha district of Guangzhou has become one of the most popular regions for business and real estate development. It has the same distance about one hour drive between Shenzhen, Dongguan, Guangzhou, Zhongsheng, and Zhuhai. Not just graduates from Hong Kong universities, but many business people from the US and UK who does business in China and with China also settled there. This region is built on a premise to become the next Shenzhen of China because there is a huge port as well. If you don't know much about Shenzhen, well, it's a Silicon Valley of China but on steroids because raw materials are very cheap and assembly lines are ready for mass production. In the middle of the Pearl River estuary, there is another mega project that already started, the Shenzhen Zhongshan Bridge and Tunnel. And the project has started in 2016 and it will be completed by 2024. The Chinese government is going to build another 24 km long sea tunnels and bridges across the sea, just north of the current Hong Kong Zhuhai Macau Bridge. There are many other high-speed rail projects and land developments around the Bay Area. So you might be wondering, what is the CCP going to do ultimately? If we sum up all the individual projects together, let's look at the overall picture. Well, it's pretty clear. With such a road and bridge network, everyone can basically drive to any city around the Bay Area conveniently. This includes people from Hong Kong as well. But currently, people from Hong Kong, Macau and mainland China complain that the Hong Kong Macau Bridge is so useless because it takes two hours to go to Macau after the long immigration and border control and the bridge is just a vanity project. But is it really a vanity project? Of course not. As much as I personally dislike the Chinese Communist Party and its autocracy, it's undoubtedly a very good chess player. They know perfectly well how to deal with Hong Kong and speed up the reunification. The most efficient way they use is to keep quiet and just do projects around Hong Kong and devour it seamlessly with clean-cut precision when the time comes. And they are very patient. By the time in 2047, those constructions and mega projects are pretty much ready and the CCP would announce that the borders of Hong Kong and Macau would finally be lifted and immigration and border control would be removed. Basically, hardware is already there, what you need is just a software update. China is laying the groundwork for Hong Kong's reunification. Once that happens, it really is just a quick software update and it's a part of mainland China. And all those draconian restrictions to pass the Hong Kong Macau Bridge can be abolished in a matter of days. As a result, common people in Hong Kong can migrate to the other side of the Bay Area and buy new homes at just one-fifth of the house prices in Hong Kong. This could reduce housing expenses in return and the whole region can come to an equilibrium. And finally, Hong Kong, Shenzhen, Dongguan, Guangzhou, Zhongshan, Zhuhai and Macau can be merged into a giant megacity with around 60 million population. So for now, Hong Kong, Zhuhai, Macau Bridge is completely useless. But ultimately, it's a tool to make the integration seamless and more incentive to move freely to the people living in that region. So what do you think? 
Is this bridge a waste of money and a gimmick or a good chess move by the Chinese government? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please hit the like button and subscribe. Turn on the notification. It would help the channel with the algorithm. And thanks to all these people who are supporting this channel on Patreon. And if you want to suggest a topic or anything, join this channel on Patreon. We do some fun stuff sometimes over there. If not, then just drop your thoughts in the comment section.